Hi, everybody. This is Amanda, Kevin, A. Smith Gallery, and we're here to talk about our current uh, online exhibition, Imagined. Um, we were lucky enough to have Susan Bernstein be our juror. Susan, um, I've been aware of her work for a, a very long time. You have two? Right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, she does really great stuff. She she. She's very special and she makes her own. She makes her own cameras, cameras and her lenses. Yeah. That's how she captures what she sees in her head. Right. So they're they're really wonderful. She and has that, quite a collection. Very yeah. fascinating depth of field and it, really wonderful work. Yeah. Great stuff. So and, we were, it's, and it's somewhat analog, I think. Right? It is definitely analog. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. analog. Right. right. So we, we were really excited to have her as a juror. She... um wrote a little statement about Imagine that I'm going to let Kevin read for us. Having the ability to conceive of and construct a world that exists solely in one's creative imaginings calls to mind my favorite quote from the classic tale, Peter Pan. Quote, the moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease forever to be able to do it. The 55 images included in the gallery and online exhibitions of Imagine soar into unique worlds that offer boundless possibilities that span between harrowing to pure delight, unknown to strangely familiar and from the beauty of the unseen to revealing the utterly fantastic. It was an extremely difficult task to narrow down selections for the gallery and online exhibition to just 55 images. And selecting just one image for the juror's prize was near impossible. But after much deliberation, the esteemed honor goes to Renee Lynn's The Light Within, a technical marvel that leaps into the world of magnificent possibility. In A. Smith Gallery, directors Amanda Smith and Kevin Tully bestowed the director's award to Steve Isaac for his delightful tableau, Blues in the Garden of Cosmos. There were so many spectacular submissions I wish I could have included. I commend and thank every artist that took the leap and allowed me to experience his or her unique and wonderful world. Congratulations to the selected artist, Susan Bernstein. Very nice. Very nice. You know, when you start quoting Peter Pan, I get excited. I love Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you ready to get started? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through each image and Kevin's going to do a screen share. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to attempt that as usual. See if we can make it work. Here we go. All right. Me there. We're almost there. Okay. There we go. All right. Good deal. So our first image up is by Abby Rader. <clears throat> uh, it's called The Art of Accessorizing. It is part of the 27. Um, Abby lives in, I get there in a minute, uh, lives in Weston, Vermont. And she has a little story about this, a little statement. You want to read okay. that for us? I see stories. I do too. <laughs> when I first see a possible composition, the decision to click the shutter is dependent upon a story floating in my head. I look at all the elements of nature as characters, each having their own personal story. Magically, in my world, trees, plants, and even bugs have voices, creating a charming narrative. <clears throat> I was standing at the edge of a forest looking in when for some reason I decided to look up and saw this branch. Being autumn, the trees were in their shedding mode. As I watched the branch, now a character, gently releasing one leaf after another, my mind went to Coco Chanel and her sage advice, remove one article of clothing before leaving the house. She believed less is always more. This is the text that, the comp that uh, accompanied the image. Branch understood the art of accessorizing. After gazing at herself in the pond, she took Coco Chanel's advice and removed not one, but three items. Coco was always, always right. I take Coco's advice every time I walk out the door with Cameron in. That's wonderful. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's really nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful image. Everything about it is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next, we have Alan Leader. Alan lives in Evanston, Illinois, and this is called Stillwater Piano Pool. And this is really interesting because, you, I mean, I I recognize the pool 
yeah. pretty immediately. But then you see the piano keys or what ostensibly are piano keys. And it's like, what? Which makes it even more interesting. Yeah. So yeah. It, it almost gives me vertigo. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Here we have um, a couple of images by Anita Rama. Um, this particular one is called Bees, Blossoms, and Berries. Um, Anita is from Reno, Nevada. And I know Amanda, Amanda especially likes this image. I like bees. You like bees. This is it's the the the, uh, the chaos and the color are really nice in this image. They are. Did she have a statement? Well, she actually has a coin that goes with this. Do you want to read right there, Kevin? Okay. Bees, blossoms, and berries keep the planet so merry. Break the link they cherish. See the end to perish. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right that's, on. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And her next image is called uh, Roosting Time. It's the same person? Same person. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Very, very nice. Yeah. I like that. Good job. Thank you very much. So here, here we have Aubrey Guthrie. Aubrey lives in Hearst, Texas. Uh, this particular image is called Traffic. Actually, Mandeville, Louisiana. Well, you know, we he's, won't we won't he, get into. He splits his time. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> this is a wonderful <laughs> image. Yeah, that's great, Aubrey. Thank you. So here, this image is by um, Brianna Burnett. Uh, Brianna lives in Texas too. She lives in McKinney, Texas, and this particular image is entitled "Goddess." And this is really perfect for this yeah, for this call for entry. It's it draws you in trying to decipher it. I like that. Yeah, it does. Very nice. Thank you, Brianna. Uh, Danielle Wright. Danielle lives in Australia, in Randwick, Australia. Uh, this is entitled Dream Weaving. It is part of the 27, and she did write a little story about it. Here, there you go. The subtlety of the colors is really nice. Yeah. Dream weaving is part of the larger body of work called Bird, Bone, Blood, and Stone, comprising 10 conceptual photographic art images. In this series, I delve into the depths of feminine archetypes using intimate self-portraits to explore various themes such as sensuality, vulnerability, vitality, rebirth, death, liberation, empowerment, spirituality, wildness, strength, connection and intuition through this particular image i am to illuminate our inherent connection to the earth the cosmos and the unseen realms we serve as conduits emerging imagine merging imagination into creation to further convey the essence of this artwork i have composed a poem specifically for this piece capturing its potency and significance in the realm of dreams she wanders where creation holds no bounds Visions pulse through her veins and endless possibilities surround. A, co a conduit to the cosmos, she breathes in perfect harmony, witness to the unseen magic manifesting with alchemy. She plays with fire and illusion of the Ouroboros circle game, devouring its own tail forever being reclaimed. Gently pulling of the rope of curiosity to the mysteries yet to unfold, conscious of the process that is out of her control. This is her dreamscape world, all is possible and true, and she is but a vessel for wonderment to shine through. Very nice. Wow. Now, I have to go back here. Auroboros, I think that is the, the image of the snake chasing, its, chasing and devouring its tail, I believe. Okay. All right. I'll take your word. I had to that. clarify that. I may okay. be wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a lovely image. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Thank you, Dan Daniel. So next we have an image by David Anderson. Um, it is called Beyond Silence. It is part of the 27. Uh, David lives in Hopewell, New Jersey. I like the art deco kind it of is, vibe. It is. Yeah. yeah, I thought about that. I think that's really nice. You don't really need that. Okay, thank you. You can have those back. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a nice image. Thank you, David. So this is uh, Debbie Kane. 
Um, we just talked to Debbie this the other day. She sure did. She lives in Pacifica, California. And the title of this is Spiritual Reflection. And this is analog, right? Wasn't everything analog? Um, I may they, be wrong. well, I may be wrong about that, but I'm not sure this one is, but she does a lot of yeah. analog work. Yeah. So it's one of those where you've split it, you know, I think people can see that. Um, yeah, and it's looking down on a puddle. Is that what she said? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Nice, uh, nice reflection. So Donna Dan got Donna lives in College Station, Texas, not too far from us. Uh, she's got two images in. Um, this particular one is I dreamt I was beside the sea. Nice image. Donna. Yeah. Both of these are really nice, Donna. And this one is called I dreamt it was only hide and seek. This is part of the 27. That kind of references Peter Pan, like we were talking yeah, about earlier. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 I'm kidding. One of the lost boys. Yeah. <laughs> so this is um, images by Gordon Saparia. <clears throat> I'm madly in love with this image. It's called uh, Morning Light. Gordon lives in Carlisle, Massachusetts, and it is part of the 27. It's a beautiful image. I just love the construction of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The little yellow flowers all over the place are just really wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a really good job. Thank you so much, Gordon. This one, another one I love. Uh, this is by Honey uh, Walker. Honey um, lives in London, I believe. Hang on, and I'll tell you for sure. Uh, yes, she lives in London. Uh, this is entitled Rainbows and Silence. It is part of the 27. And she also wrote a story about this. Okay. A statement about it. <clears throat> I started working on a series of images about 18 months ago called Geisha. Geisha. I took two trips to Kyoto specifically to study the life of Geisha to explore why a woman today would wish to enter this ancient order similar to a nunnery. These women leave their families in their teenage years to dedicate their lives to the study and performance of art, the art of dance, music, and song. Layers of paint and makeup hide their true emotions and features from the world, much like a nun's habitat is a uniform that is difficult to see past, so is the face paint and kimono of the Maiko. It might be Mako. My exploration of their lives and practice was very humbling. These women spend their whole lives studying their art and performing. They live totally celibate lives with a community of women. It is a meeting of an ancient world with modern times. The image Rainbows and Silence is an imagined scene created by layering in camera multiple images and then finessing the result in procreate. The image explores the contrast between beauty, fragility, and strength all attributes that the Mako must develop within herself while projecting an enigm enigmatic smile and a flawless dance. It's really beautiful. Yeah, she's got a whole body of work around this, and it's really worth going on her website and checking it out. All of these people have um, their work on their websites, and, and look at everybody's work. There's some really good good stuff out there. Absolutely. Yeah, I love all the, the trees. and the... It's almost like a quilt. It, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So here we have two images uh, by Igor mm. Glick. Igor lives in France. And this particular one is called <laughs> City of Darkness. And it is part of the 27. And I think it's just fabulous. What do you think? I love it. It, it actually reminds me a lot of, I can't think of a specific painter. Yeah. But it has that, that 19... Late forties, early fifties look that I think is wonderful. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. Well done. This one is beautiful too. This is called okay. If I say this wrong, uh, Ruski Mir, which means Russian order. No, we 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 spoke with him, right? No, we've never. We did, okay, okay, I thought we. Did. No, I did get on his website. He uses this model in a lot of his um his imagery, so she's familiar to him in a lot of his images Very nice. but that's a beautiful beautiful work so here we have i'm going to get there in a minute um evita lastina who is from do you remember where she's from kevin mm -hmm. it's a test 
No, I don't. <laughs> Latvia. Latvia, yes. Oh, yeah, right. that Latvia. Yeah. And um, this particular image is called, I think, oh, I hope I don't get these mixed up now. Uh, let's go lost. That's it. This one is. And it, I mean, she's using um, in camera movement here. So that's where all that swishy comes from. Very nice. Yeah. And her other one, which is entitled Loveliness, also the same process. It's part of the 27. And she did write some words about this. You I really like this one. Yeah. Urban conversation offers a unique perspective on city life. Highlighting the moments of beauty that often go unnoticed in the hustle and bustle of daily life. Despite intense ongoing geopolitical and environmental changes, moments of tranquility and awe can emerge when one takes a moment to observe intricate patterns and colors amongst city streets. This series conveys the impressions that emerge from the magnificence of the unseen. <clears throat> This project is my reflection on these intensive ongoing processes, yet, yet simultaneously I'm looking to stop even for a short time to appreciate the beauty of a brief now moment. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. It's really, really nice. Yeah, the colors are just so... Well, it's very painterly. Which I it like. is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is Jamie Hankin. Um, Jamie's been working on this particular project that this image came from for quite a few years. It's called, this image is called Celestial Number 224. It is part of the 27. And Jamie lives in Kinderhook, New York. Really cool. I really like this body of work. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. This is Jeff Shiwi. She we we Did just learned, we just learned how to pronounce his name correctly. <laughs> yes, we just talked to him this week, and we're given a lesson in how to say his name. Um, so we apologize for all the times we got it wrong. Um, Jeff lives in Chicago, Illinois. This particular image is entitled "Double Silhouette," and it is part of the twenty-seven. And Jeff is is a really really good photographer. Absolutely, he, he makes really nice imagery. You want to say what he's what he said about his image making go ahead no you have to say it too well, my, it, it, jeff shot professionally forever and did you know ads and things and everything had to be completely perfect so he's given that up mm -hmm. and he tries to muck it all up so <laughs> there it is and, it, and it's wonderful he's really good at he's it good at yeah it. yeah it's a beautiful image very nice So this, I love this. This is by Jennifer Wainan. It's called Ver Verdant Echoes. Uh, Jennifer lives in St. Anthony, Minnesota, and it is part of the 27. She is a film photographer, so I'm I'm going to just assume this is probably shot on film, although it would be a digital print. It's a really evocative image. It's the, the hands. I mean, you focus on the hands. Yeah. And they, they say a whole lot. We put this in our ad for Shots Magazine this recent time. So you can see it in there too. Um, Joel Butler. Joel lives in Oro Valley, Arizona. He's got a couple of in images in, in this exhibit. This particular one is entitled Lily. And the next one, Kevin. Very nice because it's so graphic. Is entitled Sonoran Desert Reimagined. Yeah, I really like all the movement in this image. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. And this is part of the 27. <laughs> this is judy brown and the title of this is head exchange um judy <laughs> <laughs> judy lives judy lives in uh uh natick massachusetts and judy's <laughs> wonderful if you don't know judy you need to meet her <laughs> she is a character so i mean this is just judy she's a <laughs> she's a texan she is a Texan. That taught at Wellesley. Yep. Did she have, I can't remember all the stories, but oh, anyway. She went to Rice. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, she's, yeah, she is she, a Texan. She's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So next we have this image by Julia Orstrop. <clears throat> uh, Julia lives in Darren, Connecticut. And this particular image is called 
Papa's spectacles. This is cool. It is a cool image. It's like a drawing. Yeah, she's also an analog photographer, so I, I, I suspect some of that's going on here. So the next two images are by Kaisha Siren, and she lives in Finland. Let's see if I can get more specific on that. Um, oh, boy. In Lapland. Let's just go with Lapland, okay? <laughs> and she has a really wonderful body of work. We just spoke with her the other day. She, she's documented the the uh, loss of sea ice and, the, and the, the, the melting of the icebergs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, she's pretty passionate about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this particular one is called Iceberg Graveyard 6. And she, she does have the story. You I have read. always been drawn to the beauty, beauty the Arctic and Antarctic landscapes provide. This body of work illustrates vanishing ice of the polar regions initiated by climate change. The work is a collection of poetic abstractions depicting the progression of global warming. The polar regions are more rapidly affected than many other areas on the globe. Unfortunately, the vastness of the problem is not yet well comprehended due to the lack of human habitation in those remote areas. These images are impressions of the beauty this world represents and the impending loss we face. Wow. And her images are very affecting. And so the next one, this one is called Iceberg Graveyard Number 10. Yeah. So Iceberg Graveyard, um, she explained it to us. It's a spot where... Um, they come in and they collect. Yeah, the icebergs come down and, and they collect. And they... And they can't get out, basically. Yeah. So they melt down. So that's why she called it Iceberg Graveyard. Right, right. Yeah, beautiful. So this image is by Karen Goslaw for uh for Mariko, I'm gonna say. It's called Porto. Um Karen lives in Newburgh, New York, and she does have a little story about this, Kevin. Right. Porto is a reflected street self-portrait taken in Porto, Portugal. Porto explores visually a woman's place in the world and the footprint they leave as women photographers. Throughout history, women photographers have explored self-portraiture. Bernice Abbott, Dorothea Lang, Cindy Sherman, and Vivian Mayer explored the reflective surfaces of the urban environment through self-portraiture. The reflective world has become Karen's playground and inspiration for visual storytelling and self-portraiture self has been a study she has extensively explored for 15 years. Karen finds the archaeology of layers create a dynamic depth of field she calls the fourth dimension, where the refracted and reflected light become the narrative and dialogue for her visual translations. <clears throat> These surreal spaces create a world where one can imagine the endless possibilities for change and growth for women in a forever changing world. Very nice. Yeah, that's very Yeah, cool. this is a really fun one just to look at. You know, it's like, what's going on? And I really like her bow legs. <laughs> okay. So next we have a couple of images by <clears throat> Kathleen Massey. Kathleen lives in um, East Sedgwick, New York. Uh, this particular one is called A Melody Well Sung, and it is part of the 27. It's very nice, again, because of it's, that painterly quality. It's yeah, it's beautiful. just beautiful. Yeah. And her second one is called Prelude to Night, which is also just stunningly beautiful. Yeah, it is. Very, very nice. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. And I think the choice of tonality of that is perfect. Absolutely. Ah, Kevin Wu. So um, the title of this is Eclosion. I'm going to, I think that's right. Is that Eclosion, a word? yeah. Okay. Um, it is part of the 27. <laughs> Kevin lives in Forest Hills, New York. Interesting shot. Yeah. It's a little slightly disturbing in a good way. That's right. <laughs> okay. So next we have two images by Lawrence Manning. Lawrence lives in Nampa, Idaho. This particular one is called Murder in D.C. Love that title, Lawrence. Lawrence has been exploring this, this Crow uh, series for quite a while now, and he's he's been doing some really interesting work. And I, I really, he has a quite a few images where he includes the vocal uh, impression of the Crow uh, 
calling, I guess, into the imagery, which I think is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great image. And this one, of course, we've got a, another bird in there. This was entitled Sanctuary, and it is part of the 27. That's also Lawrence. And it's, that's also Lawrence, yeah. yes. Very nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I like that. Well done, Lawrence. Next, we have an image by Leanne Trivet S. Uh, it's called Hiding Self Portrait. Leanne lives in our sister city of Johnson City, Tennessee, and it is part of the 27. And Leanne has been creating a body of work of self portraiture that's just magnificent. She's been doing some really nice work. And her, uh, she's she's a colorist too. She's really good yeah, with she's color. Good. She's very good with color. She she currently is going to well soon is going to be teaching a, a workshop about self portraiture that's for right. Santa Fe workshops. So she, and she has been teaching. For she has. Yeah. This isn't the first one. Yeah. So we have a couple of images here by Linda Caldwell. Uh, Linda is from Turkey, from Istanbul. I don't know if we've ever had anybody from Turkey in a. Oh, maybe uh, we, yeah, have. we have. Okay. Um, this particular one is called Dreams. I really like the ghosty yeah. horses down here. I think that's very, very interesting. It's all ghosty. It's beautiful. And this particular one is called Strolling. It is part of the 27. Very nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. The treatment is done well. So... Next, we have a couple of images by Linda Plasted. Uh, Linda lives in Frederick, Maryland. Um, this particular one is called Dreamweaver, and it is part of the 27. There's a lot going on there. Nice image, yeah. Compositionally, I like it a lot. Yeah, it all works really, really well together. And this one, more birds. There's this lots is of birds all, going This on. is also her. Yes, this is hers too. It's called... To build out of my life a few wild stanzas. Yeah, I like that's this a lot. great title. Yeah, nice yeah, image. a lot going on there too. It's really beautiful, all the layers. Okay, so this, I I got out of, I got out of order here, Kevin. Imagine that. <laughs> this is by uh, Mary. I'm Ayu. always out of order. You're always out of order. <laughs> this is by Mary Ayu. Uh, Mary lives in Fairfield, California. Uh, this particular image is called Whispers in the Woods, and it is part of the 27. Well, this image pulls on my heart screen because I had an Appaloosa cult when I was younger. Yeah? Yeah. His name was Mamonte, which meant whirlwind in Kiowa. Ah, there is a whirlwind going on yeah. here. And he was, he was fab. He was my buddy. Yeah. That's a beautiful image. It is a beautiful image. The horses look so at home there. Yes. Uh, here we have, I'm going to get to that one in a minute. Um, Melanie Schoeniger. Uh, Melanie lives in um, Germany, in Bavaria. This image is called Beyond the Edge of Darkness, number one. It is part of the 27, and she wrote something about that, Kevin. Okay. Beyond the Edge of Darkness, this series reimagines the feeling of awe I experience when diving, and the vast, mysterious sea is my stage. These images utilize unique perspectives that highlight bioluminescence and surreal colors inspired by, inspired by coral reefs and nudibranchs, as they, and they envision that, that how underwater species sense the world via ultraviolet and in, infrared sight. As our oceans are in a vulnerable state, it is my hope that my focus on beauty and wonder will spark reflection about humanity's role in our interconnected ecosystems. Very nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. She's got a whole series of these. Once again, go on the website and check it out. Important. Ah, here we go. I'm in order again. Um, this image is by uh, Merrick Bogazar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he lives in the Czech Republic. I don't think that's right, but well, it's close enough. He's going to be mad at us, but <laughs> we should remember how to pronounce his name. So the, the title of this is Night Assemblage. He has a whole series of where he's gone out and um, photographed um, sand, dunes. sand dunes. And then he puts these treatments on them. And that he's are doing some really, really, really nice work. 
Yeah. Really, really, it's very, very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. He puts a lot of a lot of uh, creative thought into composing these images. He does. It's lovely. Thank you. Paula Goodvar. Uh, Paula lives in Cottage Grove, Oregon. This image is called "Painting My Day," and it is part of the twenty-seven. We it, talked to her the other day. We sure did. It's very nice. Yeah. There's there's a tremendous amount going on in there. I love the which, little birds at the which bottom. I really like. Yeah, it's a beautiful image. Thank you, Paula. So next, we have a couple of images by Renee Lynn. Um, Renee lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and this particular image is called Sacred Mountain. I like the purely aspect of this again and the simplicity of it. I think that's, that really works well. Now, her next image is entitled um, The Light Within, and it actually got the Jurors Award. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. Really, really nice. Yeah, I love this image. She wrote a little, a little story about it. The Light Within portrays the sacristy of a small rural chapel, <clears throat> excuse me, in northern New Mexico. The emanation of golden light represents a divine presence that guides the soul with goodness, wisdom, and hope. In this impressionistic union between representation and abstraction, spiritual presence materializes in an unexpected way born from all that is sacred in this land. And anybody who has spent any time in New Mexico will agree with all of that. There is there is definitely something special going on there. And that's a very special image. Yes, it's it's it is. lovely. Yep, very nice. Yeah, thank you. This is by Robin Trolloff. Robin lives in Downers Grove, Illinois, and it is an untitled image. Very nice. It is very cool. Their like shoes it. are big. Their, their feet are big. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of our kitten. Gail lives in Downers Grove. Yeah, Gail yeah. Stevens lives in Downers Grove. Yes, she does. Gail is wonderful. We miss Gail. So, <clears throat> this image is by Ryan Zocklin. Uh, Ryan lives in Chicago, Illinois, and it's called Locus Placidius Number 12. This is a this is cyanotype, and it's actually eighteen by twenty four, so it's a pretty good size. Right. And I, I did we talk to him? No, we have not talked to him. I just have that information here. Okay. I love this. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. That's a, that's really nice. And it's a whole body of work too. He's got more of them. Uh, this is by Sharon Covert. Um. Sharon lives in uh, Tinton Falls, New Jersey. This particular image is entitled Alchemy of the Soul, and it is part of the 27. Beautiful. Yeah, well, Sharon does a lot of self-exposure. Well so done. I'm, I, um, self-exposure. So <laughs> what am I saying? I don't know. Only you know. Self-portraiture. <laughs> Only you and know. That, I, that's probably her right there. Yes, nice. Yeah, it is nice. a beautiful image. Um, next, we have an image, a couple of images, by uh, Shelly Vandegrift. Shelly lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's two people from Santa Fe. Uh, this particular image is called Survive. Nice with those yeah, the, wonderful the clouds. Yeah, the clouds are so beautiful. Yeah, the clouds behind are really lovely. Yeah, I like that a lot. This one is called The Song, and it is part of the 27. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that. Nicely done. So then we have a couple of images by Stacy Honda. Um, Stacy lives in Seattle, Washington. Uh, this particular one is called Insight. Yeah, nice. I love that. They're nice. they're simple composites that yeah, uh -huh. I like it a lot. And this one is part of the twenty seven. It's called the Messenger. And here we go more with these with these birds. I think Susan may have a deal with birds too. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. So this image, Steve Isaac. Um, Steve lives in Athens, Georgia. And the title of this is Blues in the Garden of Cosmos. Uh, this is part of the 27, and he did, we gave him the director's award for this image. I love this image. I think uh, 
it possibly could have something to do with my attachment to, to New Orleans. But yeah. It's very it's a very evocative image to me. Very nice. And we have another bird in there. Yeah. You like birds. <laughs> Uh, this is by Susan Isaacson. Susan actually has three images in here. So this particular one is, um, don't let me get them mixed up here, um, at Silver Lake. They're all at Silver Lake. At Silver Lake uh, number one. And she's, she's creating there are these moments that really don't exist, but it's like a, a world well, read her statement. that's there, but not there. Yeah. I'll read the statement. Much is lost in the act of remembering. Exploring personal photographic archives, I reclaim the sense of wonder and curiosity experienced in my youth while idling along the shores of our family lake home or exploring new terrain. In this series, I re-photograph Kodachrome slides and invite light and environmental intrusions to transform the images. There is a forlornness to this process as I acknowledge that recollection is tinged with the perspective of loss and eroded by the element of time. And I think that comes through absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I think they're just, they're really well done. So the next one, this one is part of the 27. This is called At Silver Lake number 22. Yeah, very evocative. And the last one, they're, so, they're all so beautiful together. Mm -hmm. This is called At Silver Lake number 20. Where I imagine you to be. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. Well done. Susan lives in Glencoe, Illinois. It's like a, it's like the stars have exploded. And There's are, magic going on there. And, uh, raining down on the earth. Yeah. So I think we're on the last one. All right. Uh, this is by Tony Ship. Tony lives in Huntsville, Texas, not too far from us. This is an installation shot of the piece. Um, it's untitled number three is the title. It's photo emotion on acrylic. I would really love to I'd see love this. I'd love to see that yeah. person. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So does it have a light behind it? Do you know? I don't know, but I'm assuming so. Yeah. Really cool. It's got a cord. It's got a plug in. So yeah, yeah there's there's a light source. He spent a lot of time on. putting this together. And there's, there's three of them. So. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. All right. So one more slide. Oh. What does that represent? Well, every last Saturday in September is World Cyanotype Day. So for those that didn't know, A. Smith Gallery, along with Shootapalooza, created, and the city of Johnson City uh, residents, we went out and we created the world's largest cyanotype. At least it was the largest cyanotype for a couple of about weeks. that long. <laughs> um, and this is it. So you can kind of see it's pretty big. It's, it's 30 feet wide by 90 feet long. It was massive. Yeah, it was and massive. What, what a tremendous amount of fun it was. It was it amazing. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. And so we celebrate every year just the big big blue. I think right. we called it big blue. And if there's anybody out there that's within driving distance of Wimberley, we're going to be doing another group of Sienna types on October 14th. 14th. In, in celebration of the eclipse. Of the eclipse. So if you're interested in participating, get in touch with us and we'll yeah. we'll line you out. Absolutely. All right. Okay, you can go into the next one. Oh, there's another one? No. Or that's... just stop screen sharing. Yeah, that's it. So just be sure, you know, everything that we posted here is going to get posted on Instagram and Facebook, all the images. So um, be sure and vote, you know, with your likes. For, for images, because whichever image gets the most likes will win the Visitor's Award. And it's that's a pretty big deal. We just did a, um, you, know, you never know how it's going to pop up. We, we just did a, um, um, one of these things, Zoom, <laughs> a Zoom thing uh, with um, Jeff Larson with Crit House about our favorite five. So we selected our favorite it was all uh, not our favorite, but y'all's favorite. It was all jury. It was all uh, visitors award. Visitors award. Yeah. The the highest number of votes for visitors award during twenty twenty two, and featured those. So go on his website and look at that. It's it's a really interesting interview. <laughs> Images are great. What else? I think that's it. Okay. Well, we want to again thank <laughs> Susan Bernstein for 
for juring. She did a wonderful job. Thank you all of y'all for entering and supporting the gallery. And uh, more to come. <laughs> Wear blue. Royal Santa type day. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.